Uh, there's some uh, new syntax for this and um, super, and uh, this is what it does. Um, if you've got um, a non-static member class, you can use class name dot this and class name dot super to get um, enclosing instances, and um, and also uh, to get any um, inherited uh, members from that uh, enclosing instance. Okay, so um, you can. Uh, you can't do this um, outside the class, of course, or uh, with a static member class because, um, well, pretty obviously, there is no enclosing instance in the case of a static member class or if you're outside the class. Because what the technique uses is uh, this dollar $n to chain up to the appropriate class uh, enclosing instance. And um, uh, that's what you use to, uh, in class name dot this and class name dot super. So here's an example. Um, there's a couple of external classes, got j equals naught and j equals one in these. Um, and uh, here's the outer class there, and uh, it extends the xt1, and inside we've got in one which extends the xt2, and we've got uh, in three which extends in one. And uh, so look what we're doing, these have all got j's in. Uh, quite deliberately, so we can look at um, using super properly and so on. So here's um, here we go. We got uh, new out, which makes it instance of out uh, dot new followed by in one passing in ten, and the in one passing in ten is going to set uh, um, j to be ten there, and then we go to in two passing in twenty. So into you know, passing in 20, and I'll pass in 20 to the super constructor, uh, which will set the super version of J to be 20. Okay. So don't get these two instances confused. There's an instance of in one available as a super class of the uh, in two, and there's an enclosing in one, and those are quite separate. Okay. And uh, then we run test, and this is what test does. First of all, it prints um, j equals, and then I give j, which is going to be four, and then prints super dot j, which is pretty clearly going to be the super class version, which we set to be twenty, so that's twenty. And then we go in one dot this dot j. Now in one will be the enclosing in one dot this is the enclosing instance. Um, of uh, in one, which is going to be, well, we've set it here to ten. We constructed it, so that will be ten. And then we got uh, in one dot super j, which will be uh, e xt two, which is going to be one. And then uh, we go to out dot this dot j, which is going to be two. And um, out dot super dot j which would be zero. Okay. So um, of course if you if you look at what this is doing, um, out dot this dot j of course is going to find itself replaced naturally by this dollar one to get you up to the enclosing class in one, and then this dollar uh, this dollar zero to get you to the out class there, so that's what's going to be replaced. Uh, there's some new syntax for super, and this time it's super used as an invocation of the um, super class constructor. Now, when you think about it, um, if uh, y if your super class is a nested class, then if it's not static it's going to need an instance of the enclosing class to be passed into its constructor. And uh, that's what this new piece of syntax does. Uh, basically what you do is you just put um, put a reference in front of it and it has to be a reference to um, an instance of the enclosing class of the superclass and it uses that as the, um, well, well it passes that into the superclass constructor. Um, now here's a, an example of it in action. Um, there's the 
there's one class out and this is a, uh, an inner class there with a method in it which returns well that's out dot this dot i so whatever the enclosing instance of in one turns out to be it will return the i from it and here's in two which extends in one and uh, this constructor for in two um, gets passed a reference to out which it uh, uh, then passes on to the superclass constructor in one to be its um, um, immediately enclosing instance basically so here's test which um, tests the thing and a test has got um, uh, two references to out and um, this down here basically just calls test it and it sets the i in the first reference to uh, the second reference rather to one two three four so that's one two three four and the other one's going to be left at ninety nine and it takes that one that's at ninety nine and it uh, constructs in one which it uh, will construct that so you'll get a reference to that like that this zero will be that and um, uh, where are we? and uh, then it constructs in two which is uh, that passing in O2 this time so it constructs in two like that and uh, of course there uh, being uh, into having a super class which is uh, in one uh, its enclosing class now is going to refer not to that one but to that one O2 and um, therefore when we then call uh, test this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. We we'll get um, my out dot this dot i, which is out dot this dot i, which is the current version out dot this dot i. So we're in here, and uh, to get up to out, go up there. So it will print 99, and the superclass version. We're in this class here, and it's going to call m. Now there's no version of m in i2. But there isn't the superclass, so it's the superclass version which is going to run. Now, if there was an M, a method M in here, we could call super M. And that would call a superclass version. But uh, I didn't think of putting that in. But uh, uh, anyway, it's going to call M from there, which will return M is in here, of course, which means that it's going to print out. Um, uh, that version of i, which is one, two, three, four, which is uh, what you'd expect. Now, if the um, if of course there was no link there at all, we just did ordinarily did the constructor. Then what happens is um, we're in this class here. Um, we need a um, an instance of the enclosing class, so it simply climbs up the tree basically until it finds an instance of the enclosing class and uses that. So it will be this dollar one dot this dollar zero would be used implicitly.